Thanks for having me today. Um, on the lead slide there, you see some algae on one side. We're currently in the process of building some digesters. I was in Salt Lake City last week with the uh, CFO of Grand Rapids and my boss looking at algae to capture phosphorus instead of a physical chemical system. Um, the, they still have their doubts about me um, after the trip, so we'll see how that goes. And we're also putting in some digesters. We've Grand Rapids serves about 270,000 people. We've been voted Beer City USA. Some of you may have heard about Founders is growing. They went from not being on our radar to by the end of next year probably putting out 30,000 pounds a day of BOD. We had to find a solution for that. We went and met with them. They said, hey, we want to make beer. And they make good beer. I like it. Um, <laughs> And you guys treat wastewater, figure it out. Um, so we did, we're putting in an anaerobic uh, MBNR system to handle some waste streams from our surcharge customers. There's a pipe going in as I speak down in front of the plant down to Founders and there's other surcharge customers, Coca-Cola and Set Environmental and other that can tie into it. We're gonna move that loading off the head of the plant. So them are a couple things we're working on today. But really I wanted to start, um, a few years ago, uh, around 2008, if anybody remembers, the economy tanked. It tanked in Grand Rapids. We were growing. We started growing again back in about 98. Our downtown was growing. We were doing good. We wanted to keep doing good. And everything tanked. So 2008, 2009, 2010 comes along. You know, our five-year general fund's looking bad. Our, our water and sewer funds have been spent a lot of money on a CSO project. Um, we came up with this idea that we'd have a transformation investment. We went to the voters. We asked them for more income tax money, quarter of a percent, and they told them what we were going to do with it. We were going to invest in various things, and we were going to make long-term changes to how the city ran and what we did so that there'd be future lower costs. That was good for the general fund. Those of us in the enterprise fund had to come long for the ride out of our own pocket, which is normal, I think, for everybody. So one of the things we did, we did the incremental tax, and we broke it down to different areas. We set up a scorecard on our website for every task. There was about 180 of them in 2010. There's a couple hundred of them now in the new one in 2015. And so we started making changes. I think you can see up there, you probably can't read it, but there's an opportunity for water resource at our water resource recovery facility. Man, I worked on that for three years. That was a great idea. We were going to put in UF filters. We were going to run it down the street to a we franchise for a steam plant to Veolia that heats and cools our downtown with steam. And we were going to sell them reuse water to make that steam to heat and cool downtown. It was going to be a great project. There's a problem with it though it was the largest customer of the water system and they didn't want us taking their customer away so that project kind of died at that point but it was a good project so we had about 180 of these things going on at once one of the things that I got funded out of the transformation plan not from the enterprise fund was to develop a stormwater asset management plan so these were the kinds of things that we were doing long-term solutions long-term looks with this fund that the citizens allowed us to have. They voted for it. We reported out on it constantly. We had uh, boards and commissions involved with it. Every year in the fiscal plan, it turned up with a statement operation so the citizens could track it. It was kept separate from all the other funds. We made sure we followed through on our promises on what we were going to do with those funds. So that all resulted in a lot of leadership change for us. Um, we, we made a bunch of plans, sustainability plan, transformation plan, vital streets plan, um, green Grand Rapids plan. We, we got together and made a plan to green up Grand Rapids. But we didn't do these by ourselves. We engaged the whole community, multiple partners. Um, we used public funds. We went out to our foundations and we got money to do these things. We used some transformation fund money. 
and we came up with all these plans that interlocked with each other. You can see we even um, invited everybody to table, including our uh, West Michigan Environmental Action Counter. They're the activists and political people for um, clean things in Grand Rapids. Grand Rapids Whitewater was a good partner. We're working on tearing a dam out of the river now. We have a 17-foot drop in the river in Grand Rapids. Nobody has a picture of it. That's why it's called Grand Rapids. We're trying to put the rapids back in Grand Rapids. All these things flowed out of this transformation fund. So today, fast forwarding, because I only have 10 minutes, this is the city's sustainable platform. This is, this is where we're at with our culture. If I want to do a project, it's not the triple bottom line anymore. It's a quadruple bottom line. So I have to add governance to that. If I build a new road or a new swimming pool or a new process at the plant, what's it look like 20 years from now? Who governs it? If we do restore the rapids and we put um, a park down along the river, how does that park get maintained? Because back in 2008, when we lost all our general fund money, you know, what's the first thing you admit? yank money away from recreation, right? Parks, the parks died. The friends of Grand Rapids Parks is on the other side. They brought that back with some funding. But it wasn't an easy road because in 2008, we also had a CSO project going on and a couple other things. These are rate history, the sewers over on the left. You can see some significant increases when we started our um, east side CSO project going on. But a couple other things happened about that time. The economy tanked, so our flow started dropping. So that had an effect on raising rates. A customer to our north, North Kent Sewer District, decided to build their own sewer plant. That dropped off 5% of our flow. That impacted our rates. And then the wonderful accountants did an audit of the West Side CSO and decided $22 million in assets hadn't hit our books yet, which also led to rate increases. So, about 2010, my boss went down to the retirement office. That was a bad move. Never let people go to the retirement office. He came back from the retirement office. He said, Mike, I'm going to retire in five weeks. I said, Randy, we just talked about it the other day. You said three years. He said, well, I changed my mind and went down to the retirement office. You're going to give me this big check every month. So at the time, I was the assistant. So in 2010, I became the manager of environmental services. I think the day after Randy left, I went downtown, got called to the principal's office with the city manager, and he said, hey, you got to cut expenses by 10%. I'm like, what? So that, these are the kinds of things that cause you to transform. <laughs> um, so we had to take control of the whole situation. We had to start talking about ourselves and, and putting ourselves out there. If we were going to take control and we were going to make changes, we got out in front of people. We decided if we were going to be on the front page, we didn't want it to be about a CSO overflow. We wanted it to be about something cool we were doing. So we, we got out in front of it, started engaging everybody. Um, we did tours. We talked. We talked to Rotary Clubs. You haven't lived till you've done some of this stuff. <laughs> we put up billboards around town in 2016, right after we finished our CSO project. We celebrated it. We put a plaque down on the river, letting everybody know what a great job we did with the CSO. In the last years of the CSO project, from about 2004 to the end of 2015, when we went into a neighborhood, we just didn't separate and restore things the way we were they were. We used green infrastructure. All the parking lanes became um, pervious pavement, pervious asphalt. We put rain gardens along the road. We really improved those neighborhoods. Um, now the commissioners are really unhappy with us because we have gentrification going on in those areas. So we went in, invested a million dollars, brought up the infrastructure, and now we have an affordable housing issue in those areas. Everything goes around and gets you, right? Um, so we get out on Facebook, and if we put a nice article out there on things we're doing and, and everything, we get like 200 hits. We put this rag ball out there to talk to them that came out of a lift station. We got 90,000 hits. 
So that tells you what people are listening to. They're not really interested in things you are. They're interested in kittens, dogs, and rag balls, obviously. <laughs> and the other thing we started doing, I'm going to try to shorten this up because everybody else went long. That's why I'm talking so fast. Is we get out in front and, like this is a rebate check, we get down to commission, we make sure it's a big show. Our mayor is the lady there with the blonde hair holding the check. Look at that smile on that lady. You, if you want to innovate and you want to do things, you know, give her a big check, right? <laughs> and that city manager's off there, tucked off to the left, way in the back. He's smiling also, so that's a good thing. This project and this rebate check was we took out some blowers we had put in in 1998. We took them out, replaced them with turbo blowers. Um, it was an SRF-funded program. They, they gave us debt forgiveness on half the project, so it was about a $2 million project. We got about a million dollars in debt forgiveness. And then we got a check from consumers for 214000 Made it about an $800,000 project. We save about 250000 a year in electricity due to it. So that's a way to fund a, a project. And so the next time you go in front of that board and you want to tell a story or ask for some money, you know, they're all on board. So that's my short story. Thank you. <laughs>